right, so let's go ahead and, and start with these. Uh, first of all, just a, just a quick announcement. So um, because of Mountain Day yesterday, uh, Tuesday, uh, lab people didn't go to lab, obviously. So we're not gonna have lab this afternoon, just so everybody's even on the same page. Um, I, I'm likely to just send out an activity this week, so we're not too far behind in lab. Right? And it, it's not going to be like a, a full lab activity, but something that you can read and, and do at home just to prepare for next week because we are going to have to catch up. Okay. So no lab today. Um, we'll, we'll get caught up um, over the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, all right. So let's look at our hydrocarbon molecules. Suppose that these are hydrocarbons, right? We haven't really gone over any other, any functional group nomenclature other than alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Right? So uh, when we look at molecules and determine names for those molecules, what I recommend doing is, is picking the molecule apart, right? Finding the different elements that contribute to the name, right? The chain length, the number of substituents, uh, the functional groups that are on there, where the substituents are, right? And, and just get those pieces on, in, a, in a list, right? You don't have to make the whole name at first. Um, and once you have those elements, then you can piece them together, right? So, so using the IUPAC, um, nomenclature to come up with the, with the name. So let's take a look at the molecule on the left and see if we can come up with what elements we have in there. So where would where would somebody start? Yeah. Um, I started numbering. Great. The chain from one to one. From this over here. Oh, sorry, from the right side. Yeah. Great. Right, so a good, good place to start num to, to start is by numbering, right? Finding the longest consecutive chain. Right, you can see whether if I start numbering down here or if I start numbering up here, right, I'm gonna have two carbons before I get to this branch. So I will start numbering on this carbon which contains the alkene function. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? So to me, that's the that's the longest chain that I've got. Right? So what would this be based upon that chain? Yeah. What name could we go up again? Yeah. Great. So it'd be non A, right? For a nine carbon chain. All right, and then how is that going to change based upon the functionality in the molecule? Mm -hmm. uh, since there are double bonds present, the A will be changed to E. Good. So alkenes are present in structure. So we use this, the, the suffix E-N-E, not A-N-E. Right, we also have to notice that there are three alkene groups, right? There's not just one alkene group, so how is that going to further change the name? So that this goes from non-ane to non-ene, right? And then we have three alkene groups, so how does that change, what does that change the non-ene to, Karen? The um, <clears throat> one for trans? Uh, close, yeah, yeah. So, so we, we would change this first of all to um, the alkenes. Right. So that would change it to non triene. Okay. So we put that a in there. Right, whenever we have a di or a tri or a tetra, right? The tri means that we have three alkenes, right? And ene, that's the alkene. Right, and then Anna uh, commented that we need to put numbers to indicate where those alkenes are, right? So we have an alkene starting at carbon one, starting at carbon four, and starting at carbon six, right? So we further evolve this into uh, non a one, four, six. Right. Okay, so that gives us our chain, right? Our longest chain, functional groups on that chain, right? And the positions of those functional groups along that chain. Right? Okay, so what else, what, what more information do we need? Yeah. Oh, you gotta take note of the, um, the E and Z for the... Um... 
Excellent. Good. So we have to determine the, the double bond geometry, right? We have to put that information at the beginning of the name, right? So what about the double bond at carbon one? Is that going to be E or Z? Right? Uh, neither. neither, right? So this is a terminal double bond. At carbon one, we have two hydrogens. Can't determine the difference between two of the same atoms, right? Two hydrogens in terms of priority. So we're not, we're not going to have a, a geometry specified at alkene one. What about alkene four? E or Z? Z. Z? How many people agree with Z? How many people think Z? Yeah, so th this would be an E double bond, right? So on carbon four, we have a hydrogen, so that would make the carbon the higher priority atom. And then at carbon five, we have a carbon with three hydrogens, and then a carbon with two bonds to carbon and one bond to hydrogen. So that would make that the higher priority. Okay, they're on opposite sides of the double bond, so this is going to be an E double bond. All right, and then what about carbon uh, six, or the alkene at six? Right. Oh, that would be Z. Okay, good, that would be a Z double bond. All right, so at carbon six, we have uh, carbon five being a high priority than the hydrogen. Right? And then at carbon seven, we have carbon eight being a higher priority than the methyl carbon from carbon seven. Okay, so that's going to further change this name to our 4E6Z. No, no, one, four, six, train. Okay, more information, more detail than we need. Good, right? So now we just name the substituents. Right? So when we look at this molecule, um, what, what substituents did you find? Um, I found an apple group at the third carbon. Great. Ethyl group at carbon three. And two methyls, one at five and one at seven. Good. So there's a methyl group at carbon five and a methyl group at carbon seven. So putting all of that information into the name, how would you how would you arrange that? Um, I said five seven dimethyl three ethyl. Great. Okay, so for the full name, we're going to have four e six z five seven. Dimethyl, right? So we have two methyl groups, one on, one's on carbon five, one's on carbon seven. So we would use this di prefix to indicate that there are two of them, right? And then we have to number where each of them are. And then we have an ethyl group on carbon three. Put the rest of the name in there, so no no one four six triangle. So four E six Z five seven dimethyl three ethyl no no one four six triangle. Yeah. Does it matter if you put the dimethyl or ethyl first? No, no. So I, I UPAC wants you to alphabetize things. I don't I don't care. That doesn't it doesn't matter. As long as you're using the, the smallest set of numbers, right? So you're you're numbering from the correct end, right? Not the other end. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so, so technically, according to IUPAC, we would take that, that, the extra carbon on that chain and then number that as the longest chain. And then we would name the, the alkene group final, right? So it gets confusing. What we're gonna do in this class is just number um, along the chain that has the, the functional groups that we wanna name, right? So in this case, we wanna name the alkene. I'll try hard not to, not to give you molecules where it's confusing. I mean, like I said, the, the whole purpose of learning nomenclature in this class is not to learn a bunch of rules. It's just so that we can communicate with each other more effectively, right? So if I tell you 
um, in lab to go find an aldehyde, right? You can look through stuff looking for for molecules with this with the suffix al, right? Um, or if I you know casually drop a IUPAC name in class, right? You don't have to think about what I'm actually talking about. You understand what I'm talking about, right? So it's really just to make the the communication between us, right, and between and among you much more effective. Um, any other questions about the structure? Okay. I'm going to move on to the structure. Anybody want to give a name that they came up with? Okay. Simple one. Sure. Uh, okay. Four ethyl, one methyl, two four dipropyl, cisyl hep one D. Excellent. Right. That's I I didn't catch all of it, but it sounded sounded correct. All right, so, so how are we going to approach this? First of all, whenever we have cycles, right, we're going to name the molecule based off the ring, right? So whenever you see a ring and substituents coming off that ring, we're going to name the molecule based on the ring. Don't try to find the longest consecutive chain, right? Because we're not, we're not doing that anymore. Just count the number of, of carbons in the ring. So we'll start numbering at the alkene and at the methyl group. see that when I number it, I number it counterclockwise in this case because that's going to give me the lowest set of numbers, right? I have a, a substituent on carbons one, two, and four, right? If I were to number the other way, right, I would have the substituent on carbons one, two, and six, right? So I want to use numbers one through four rather than one through six. So in this case, I'll, I'll number to give me the lowest set. All right, so this is going to be a... Cycloheptene. All right. I indicated that we have three different types of substituents. So we have a methyl group, we have a propyl group, we have another propyl group, and then we have an ethyl group. Right. So I will just remember these starting at one. So one methyl. Four dipropyl, and then four ethyl. All right, we could just leave it cycloheptene, or we can call it cyclohept one. -ene. It's kind of understood whenever we have a functional group or an alkene, just one alkene in that ring, that alkene is going to be a carbon one. Right? So we can explicitly say it's a carbon one, or we can just assume that the, that whoever's reading the name understands if they have an alkene, that must be where they're starting them to number. Well. All right, questions about this? Yeah? Do we have to put E or D for the bond? So in this case, no, because um, it's, almost impossible to have an E double bond in a ring, right? So in a ring, those two carbons have to connect through the rest of the ring, so they're usually going to go off to the same side. Once we get to uh, like 12 carbons or above, it gets a little easier to have different geometries of double bonds, and then in that case, you would have to name them, but we won't have any that. Other questions? Okay, seems like everybody's good on hydrocarbon naming. So uh, what I'm going to do is just write out a bunch of um, substituents that are common, right, that, that you'll see that don't necessarily follow IUPAC nomenclature, right? So these are just ones that you're going to kind of have to remember off the top of your head. 
Um, so this is just for contrast. So this is a propyl group, right? A three carbon group. Again, this is where, you know, where I'm just showing with this squiggly line that this carbon is attached to something, right? And whatever you know, is hanging off that attachment side to the right, that's the group. So this is a propyl group. Technically, it's an N-propyl group, or a normal propyl, right? Meaning that those three carbons are arranged all in one row. Okay, for contrast, right? This is uh, an isopropyl group. Right, so you can see that the attachment, rather than being attached at carbon one, right, now this three carbon unit is attached at carbon two. Okay, so for example, if, if I had, this molecule, I would just call this isopropyl Right, so you can see there's a three carbon unit attached to that benzene ring, it's just attached by the middle carbon, right? Not the end carbon. So whenever we have three carbons, right, we can arrange those three carbons or attach those three carbons in two places, right, two different places, either at the end, right, or we can attach that three carbon piece in the, in the middle, carbon two, right. Whenever, whenever, whenever we have four carbons, we can arrange those four carbons in, in kind of a different order um, to give, you, give us different substituents, right. So just like N-propyl is just three carbons in a row, and butyl is going to be a, just a straight four carbon chain. Right? So that's no different. We're not going to name that any different than just being butyl. I'm just showing that to contrast the other, the other four carbon groups. Okay, so you can see the N-butyl group out of four carbons, right? The isobutyl group, I drew it wrong. Right, rather than those four carbons being arranged in a chain, and I drew this wrong too. There's like one extra carbon. Right, rather than those four carbons being arranged in a chain, you can see I've taken the terminal carbon off, right, and I've made kind of this isopropyl group at the end. Right, that's called an isobutyl group, a sec-butyl group, right, we're just taking that end carbon off and putting it rather than on carbon two, right, we put it onto carbon one. Right? Those two we're probably not going to use very very often. I mean, they're good to know, right? Good to recognize, but we probably won't use them very much in nomenclature. Um, terp butyl is, is a is a group that's going to come up again and again, right? So you can see all of these again. They're they're all four carbons. Right? It's just how those four carbons are arranged um, relative. Okay, so terpbutyl, that's, that's one you really have to remember. The others, again, I want you to remember, it's just not, probably won't use them too much in, in the nomenclature. The other two that I want you to know, uh, we have a phenyl group, okay, and then we have a, a 
example. So let me give you an example of each of those. Right, so here's how we, you know, one example of how we could use phenyl, right? So we would name it as a substituent rather than naming this off of the benzene ring, right? We would name it, name it off the six member uh, cycloalkene, right? And just say that, that we have a phenyl group on carbon one where the double bond starts. Right? Likewise, if we have molecule. like that, we would name that benzyl bromide, right? Saying that there's a benzyl group that's attached to, attached to the bromide. And quickly, I want to go over just uh, how we're going to name functional groups. So, so, so the book goes over how to name all of the functional groups, right? Probably more than what are on that list that I, that I gave to you. Um, we're not going to get into the weeds that much. I don't want to go into nomenclature at that depth, right? However, uh, some of the first functional groups that we're going to go over in terms of reactivity are going to be alcohols, amines, aldehydes, and ketones. <coughs> Right, and then uh, organohalides we'll get to later on, but those are really easy to name, so it's, it's useful there. So those are the five functional groups that I expect you to know how to name. Um, the molecules that I give to you are not going to be complex, right? So I expect you, to, if I have a, a, a ketone group and a molecule, right, I expect you to know what the, what the suffix is or how we would name approximately that ketone group. All right, so let's go over some of these. Okay, um, so here I have a, a, just a really simple molecule, right, three carbon chain with a hydroxy group at the end. Okay, remember when we name alcohols or when we identify alcohols, the carbon that the hydroxy group is attached to is part of that alcohol functional group, right? Okay, so I would name this propane one all. Let's dissect this name, so prop. That indicates that I have three carbons. that it's a propan rather than a propene or propine indicates that I have no carbon carbon pi bonds, right? No alkenes, no alkynes in that name. Right? And then at the end, we have the all, which indicates I have an alcohol functional group, and the numbering shows us where that hydroxy group is located on the three carbon chain. So what would we name this molecule?
Anybody want to provide some information about the name? Mm -hmm. So, so, just a question. Sure. Please. The third pane, the third pane. Over here? Yeah. Yeah. So, the part where it says no carbon, carbon double bonds, uh -huh. like what are the other like, options? Uh, double bonds. So, yeah, so if there was a double bond, that would be propene yeah, all, right? And if it was a triple bond, propine all. Right, so, we, so we're still putting that ain, een, ein information in there, right? It's just not at the end of the end of the name anymore. Okay. okay. Frank? Sure, yeah. Um, I, I wrote a cyclopentene result. Great, so you're close. So, so um, you know, a good place to start is just finding that carbon chain or carbon ring, right? So this is a cyclopent. All right, and I put dashes in there, hyphens in there to separate the numbers that we're going to put in there. Okay, <clears throat> one thing that you need to know is that these functional groups that we're going over are going to be a higher naming priority than alkenes, alkynes, uh, and alkanes, and a higher numbering priority as well. Right, so when we number this, we'll actually start numbering at the alcohol. Right, and move around towards the alkene. Okay, so that's going to give us cyclopent two em one all. Yeah. In this case, yes. Yeah, so the four functional groups that we're going to go over um, in a ring, right? We would number those as number one. How do we know which functional group has priority when numbering? Yeah, so, so the sheet that I gave you, it actually orders them in terms of priority. Um, and it's really based upon the, how, many, um, how many heteroatoms the, uh, the carbon in that functional group has bonds to, right? So you'll see uh, like a ketone, and I, I don't want to get into this too much, but a ketone is going to be a higher priority than an alcohol. Because this carbon has two bonds to oxygen, right? Whereas this carbon of the alcohol only has one bond to oxygen, right? So it's a higher, more highly oxidized functional group, and that's what gives it higher priority. All right. Any questions about naming alcohols? Um, just as an aside, I do want to talk about alkoxides or alkoxy groups. So, So um, whenever I talk about alkoxides, right, hopefully everybody can look at this and break that name down into an alkyl group. Connected to an oxide, which is just an oxygen with a negative charge. Right? So this would be propanol, okay, and this would be a propoxide group. Right. We compare that, so, so um, one of the things that you might be using this semester as a reagent is something called sodium methoxide. Right. So we have a sodium ion, ion compound, right? And then we have a methyl group that's attached to an oxide, so that would be the methoxide. Right, likewise, we can have alkoxy groups. So um, if I have an ester of 
right? I can refer to the side chain of that ester as an ethoxy group, right? It's not separate. It doesn't have, it's not an ethoxide, right? It doesn't have a negative charge on the oxygen. I'm just identifying that side chain of the carbonyl as an ethoxy group, right? So it's a way of, of um, identifying or, or naming units within molecules where you have an oxygen attached to an alpha group. Okay, questions about that? Right? Um, naming amino groups really, really easy. Um, so we just give it the suffix amine. Right? So this would be cyclohexyl amine. amino group is hanging off a benzene ring, we would just call it amino benzene, right? So we can refer to it in the suffix, right? Or if, if we have uh, other functional groups that take precedent, then we would refer to it as a prefix. Is that just cyclohexane or cyclohexane? Cyclohexane amine. Hexane. Hexane. Cyclohexane amine. Yeah. Right, we still have to communicate the, the level of saturation of the chain or the ring, right? Whether it's alkane, alkene, or alkene. Questions about amines? Yep. Um, how are we sure uh, to know when we use the suffix or the prefix? Uh, so, so for these functional groups, I'm, if I test you on them, I'm going to give you really simple monofunctional molecules, mm -hmm. right? So you'll be using the suffix for all of those. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, on the functional groups that you have handouts, that you gave us on Moodle, it says um, like for amines, it's like a bond with N and then in parentheses H comma R too. Yeah. So could it be like the R and then? So, so the R, so, so you can have, I don't know if you remember, we went over amines and we said that they're primary, secondary, and tertiary amines, right? So an amine can have, um, alkyl amines can have one carbon group and two hydrogens, right? Two carbon groups and one hydrogen or three carbon groups. So that R just means carbon. Um, Right? We're not going to learn how to name. So once you start getting more carbons on that nitrogen, the name gets a lot more complicated. Um, and so we're not going to we're not going to go into that depth of means. I just you know very simply, if we have an NH2 group, how do we name those types of molecules? Okay. Other questions? Okay. Okay, so aldehydes, um, again, one of the functional groups we're going to be going over in chapter seven and eight pretty soon. Um, really easy, they just use the suffix al, al, right? So for example, here's a molecule, you can see that I have three carbons, right? So one thing that you want to watch out for is that the aldehyde carbon is part of that chain, right? So you always want to count that, right? So three carbons with an aldehyde on carbon one, so we just call this propanal. Do we need to specify numbers here? 
Why don't I need to call this one broken out? Because the start number has a functional group in it. <clears throat> no. Why not two propanal or three propanal? Yeah. Because it's always on the end. It's always on the end, right? B based upon the structure of the aldehyde, right? The aldehyde has to have a hydrogen going off the one side. So that functional group always has to be at the end of a chain, right? It cannot be in the middle of a chain, it cannot be part of a ring. Right? So therefore we don't have to keep we don't have to worry so much about numbering aldehydes. Unless there are other functions. Right? So for example, let's see if we could name this molecule here. In fact, you know what? I'll, I'll add an element here. So you have a name, check it with your neighbor, make sure you guys agree. Right. Anybody need more time? Anybody want to uh, offer a name? Um, three comma four dimethyl pentane. Good. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, we'll start numbering one, two, three, four, five. We know that this is a pentene al. So we would name this pentuene al, right? Or pentuene one al if you really wanted to. All right? Then we just have to put the substituents in. So three, four dimethyl. Pentene two al. Anything else? Yeah. Two e. Excellent. Right? So we also have to identify the geometry. Okay, if we look at carbon three, you can see that carbon four is the higher priority atom, right? And if we look at carbon two, carbon one is going to be the higher priority atom, so this is going to be the E isomer, right? There's only one double bond, so we don't need to specify two E, right? We can just write E because it's understood that that refers specifically to that one double bond. All right, questions about this? Right? So that, that's a very common mistake, right? Get, you know, looking at a molecule, a more complex molecule that has you know, maybe unfamiliar functional groups, um, naming all the substituents, naming all the functional groups, getting the numbers in the right place, but then forgetting about the geometry, right? So don't forget about the geometry. All right. Okay, so first of all, ketones not spelled with a Y, surprisingly, right? 
So just make sure you're spelling ketones correctly. All right, not the correct way to spell ketone. Very, very common mistake, All right? Ketones are going to use the suffix own. All right, so I would call this molecule 2 propanone. Propanone, right? So, prop indicates it's a three-carbon chain, right? I have the an in there to indicate that it's an alkane, right? No, no pi carbon-carbon pi bonds, and then the O and E for the ketone, and then the two would be for the position of the ketone. That's all, all the information in there. Anybody know the name of this, common name of this molecule? Acetone. Acetone, right? What were the last three letters of acetone? Oh, right, so it's kind of in the name what functional group it is. All right, so let me give you a quick example. Right. How many people have a name? Anybody have a name? Okay. Give you guys another couple seconds and then we gotta clear out of here. Frank, you wanna share your name? got some elements in there, it's just a matter of, of putting them all in the right order with, with the right notification, right? So we have a seven carbon chain, two alkenes, and an, uh, a ketone, so this would be hepta one five diene four Right? And then we have a double bond with a specific geometry that's going to be an E geometry, five and six. Right? So again, it's the only, even though we have two double bonds, right, only one can have a specific geometry. So we don't have to put the number, we can just say E hepta 1, 5, diene 4, phone. Right, questions about this? Okay, when we come back Friday, we're going to go over intermolecular interactions. These are the interactions that govern solubility, um, govern uh, the ability to crystallize, help us understand fermentation.